Hello, my dear students. People, listen to me very carefully. Today, we are going to go ahead and learn FTP. Now, FTP as a chapter, Baba FTP 2015-20, which had come, actually was set to expire in 31st March 2020. But 20 mein to COVID came, and hence they went ahead and extended the foreign trade policy and kept on extending it. Are you guys able to understand? So now, foreign trade policy which was there was extended, 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 and now it is extended till 31st of March 2023. Okay, sir. Now listen to me very carefully. There is no amendment in foreign trade policy other than the point that the foreign trade policy which was there has now been extended till 31st March 2023. And hence, listen to me carefully. I will not be going ahead and teaching foreign trade policy again. That it means you will not go ahead and teach the foreign trade policy. Baba, I will teach you foreign trade policy. But listen, before three months, I had gone ahead and recorded the foreign trade policy for the November 22 exam. Same to same foreign trade policy is applicable for you guys, for your May 23 also and November 23 exam. Okay, sir. Baba, my throat has really come down and I will not be able to go ahead and again talk for two hours. So, what I will go ahead and do is after this video, you will be going ahead and saying the foreign trade policy. Okay, sir. The same video which I recorded for number 22, will I will go ahead and attach. But, sir, what will be the differences in the previous video, in the video which you will be going ahead and providing? Baba, there will be no difference at all other than two changes which you will have to be careful. Number one, when I am going ahead and teaching you foreign trade policy which was taught for the number 22 exam, Baba, I had gone ahead and used the chart book version 8. Okay, and now what you are using is chart book version 9. Listen, in chart book version 8, when I had gone ahead and taught to the student using the chart book version 8, there was no change at all. There is no change at all. This is chart book version 8, this is chart book version 8, and this is your chart book version 9, where here, this is your chart book version 9. So, this 8 and this 9, there is no change at all. In 8, when I have gone ahead and taught, I have just gone ahead and told that the foreign trade policy is extended till 30th September 2022. Now, for your May 23 and November 20 exam, nothing has changed other than the point that the foreign trade policy, which was applicable to 30th September 2022, is now extended till 31st March 2023. That's all. Secondly, you will see over here that in the previous attempt, it was foreign trade policy was valid till 30th September 22. Now they have deleted this and extended it till 31st March 2023. Other than beta, the content is exactly same. No change at all. No change at all. Only one point over here now. Listen, sir, the export promotion capital goods scheme, okay, the EOU schemes, the EOU schemes, etc., and advanced authorization scheme, which is there, it was. Earlier, all these three schemes, they had told in this three schemes candor, in this three schemes candor, if you import something, if you import something, the IGST and GST compensation says will be exempted only till 30th June 22. They had told earlier that it will be, it will be exempted. IGST and GST compensation says will be exempt only till 30th June 2022. See, I'll show you. Earlier, IGST and GST compensation says on these three schemes were exempted only till 30th June 2022, 30th June 2022, 30th June 2022. Now they have gone ahead and deleted this line only. All these three line, all these three points have been deleted and hence when they have deleted that IGST and GST compensation says in case you are importing under this three scheme is exempted till 30th June 2023, they have exempt deleted that date only and when they have deleted that date, it means sir, now IGST and GST compensation says is exempted forever. Now they are telling we don't have to extend date and all. IGST and GST compensation says whenever you are importing under EPCC scheme or EOU scheme or you are going ahead and doing advanced authorization may import, then Baba, IGST and GST compensation says will be exempted. That's it. Earlier it was exempted till what date everyone? 
30th June 2022. Now it is just told that it is exempted. It means there is no period of limitation that till this date only exemption is there. The exemption is there now. That's all. So I will now go ahead and attach the video for for the foreign trade policy. Don't get confused anywhere. Just remember when you are seeing the video, I'll be using this chart book, which is version eight chart book, and hence you have to be careful about this date. That 30th September is now 31st March for your May 20 and November 20 exam. 30th September is now 31st March 2023, and the IGST and GST compensation says, which has exempt in EPCG scheme, EOU scheme, advanced authorization scheme, etc., is now also exempt. But the date which was limitation saying 30th June tak only it is exempt is deleted and hence IGST and GST compensation says will be exempted. That's all. Are we clear everyone? Yes, sir. Now, let's go ahead and start understanding advanced foreign trade policy. Let's get it started, everyone. All right, students, good morning, everyone. Having done with your GST ka portion and customs ka portion, the next chapter, which is the last chapter, which is FTP. Now, FTP in your exam comes only for 5 to 7 marks, 8 marks. Now, 5 marks is the minimum. Maximum, it can go to 6, 7, 8 marks also. Why, sir? Because nowadays MCQs are there, they can ask you a small MCQ also in the exam. So, 6 to 7 marks matters in the exam. What I will go ahead and do is, I will go ahead and teach you the whole of FTP in 4 charts which are there in the chart book. After you are done with the chart book uh, discussion, after we are done with the chart book uh, discussion, all you have to do is solve your question answers and that much should be more than enough for you to go ahead and attempt your examination wala question. Right, everyone? Chalo. Let's go ahead and start our discussion. Please come to the FTP ka chart, everyone. FTP. For FTP, all the question answers which I have to cover, also I'll be covering with the discussion only. Right, everyone? So, when I'm going ahead and discussing, I'll be covering the question answers also. Let's go ahead and get it started. Everyone over here. Foreign trade policy. What do you mean by foreign? Foreign means outside India. Trade policy. Now, why do we need, first of all, a foreign trade policy? Means, what is the policy which India is going to follow regarding the foreign trade? Means, when they want to trade outside India, when they want to trade outside India, what is their policy going to be? Are we clear, everyone? Foreign trade policy, every five years, a foreign trade policy is being prepared. Now, foreign trade policy 2015 to 20 is existing as of now. Okay, everyone over here. Now, the original foreign trade policy which was there, this was valid only till 31st March 2020. But in 2020, COVID came and hence this was extended. So, first, this was extended from 31st March 2020 to 31st March 2021. Then it got extended till 31st, 30, uh, 30th September 2021. Then again 31st March 2022 and now it is extended till 30th of September 2022. Right everyone? So if you are a student going ahead and writing your exam in November 22, this foreign trade policy is only going to be applicable for you. If you are going to write your exam in May 23, Baba, don't worry about it. Whatever the changes in the foreign trade policy, the new foreign trade policy, if they go ahead and announce, then whatever is the changes in the new foreign trade policy, I will anyways be going ahead and providing on YouTube. Right, everyone? Everyone over here. But as of now, the basics for the foreign trade policy for November and May, it is going to be the same. Basic is going to be the same. Detail might be little bit here and there. It go, it's going to change. Let's go ahead and understand foreign trade policy 2015-20. Now extend it till 30th September 2022. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. What is actually the foreign trade policy? Foreign trade policy is a set of guidelines and instruction issued by the central government in matters relating to foreign trade government see baba one thing you have to remember whenever it comes to foreign trade you tell me one thing if i am selling goods to my brother my brother is selling to my mother my mother is selling to me will we ever become rich 
No, I have to go ahead and sell it to okay. outsider. In the same way, if India wants to become rich, India will have to go ahead and sell the goods outside India, get foreign currency from outside India, only then India will become rich. So, Baba, foreign trade policy is the main thing which is there, which they go ahead and see is, okay, your export potential should go up, you should earn foreign currency from outside India. Now, your income out from outside India should be less than your spending outside India. You spend 1 crore and you earned only 50 lakh from outside India, will you ever become rich? No. So, your spending should be 10 crore, Spend your earnings should be 10 crore, spending should be only 4-5 crore. There should be a favorable balance. Are you guys able to understand? So, they are going ahead and telling, they are telling that it's a set of guidelines and instruction issued by the central government in matters relating to foreign trade, import and export of goods. It aims in developing export potential. Where is the Indian goods ka requirement being there? So they have gone ahead and formed councils which are there. Councils will go and search. Where is the council will go ahead and search? Where is the Indian goods ka requirement being there? Export councils are created. Right now, leather ka one council is there for textile. One council is there. They go ahead and search. Okay, where is the need of Indian goods being there? Then improving export performance, encouraging foreign trade, creating favorable balance of payment is also very necessary because export should be more than your imports. Can I go ahead, everyone? Next. So, foreign trade policy is created every five years. 2015 to 20, they created a foreign trade policy that, sir, this five year, what is our objective going to be? How are we going to encourage the foreign trade? How are we going to get more foreign currency into the country? How are we going to increase the export? All those things are going to be told over here. Means, what is India's policy going to be for the next five years with respect to import and export? That is generally being told in foreign trade policy. Everyone over here. Now, you have the Ministry of Commerce and Industry which is there. Ministry of Commerce may, if you go to the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, the Ministry of Commerce and Industry, everyone. Ah, this is the Ministry of Commerce and Industry which is there. Here, if you go ahead and see, in the Ministry of Commerce, uh, Ministry of Commerce and Industry, the Department of Commerce is there. Okay, everyone. They are, their main vision is what? To make India a major player in the world trade and for function of the department is to formulate, implement and monitor the foreign trade policy. The main job is what? Their main job is to formulate the foreign trade policy, make it implemented and also monitor that it is being followed. Now here, along with the ministry, there is an attached office. There is an attached office which is of the Director General of Foreign Trade. Director General of Foreign Trade Organization which is headed by the boss. The boss ka name is Director General of Foreign Trade. If you go to the ministry, here you will be able to see their attached office. Now, in the attached office, you will see Director General of Foreign Trade. This Director General of Foreign Trade, he only sleeps, wakes up every time he sees how in India can be a major player in the foreign market. Are we clear? How we can grow our export potential? All these things are being seen by the Director General of Foreign Trade. Everyone, so it is headed by whom? Director General of Foreign Trade, who will basically formulate in the Ministry of Commerce, we have whom? Director General of Foreign Trade, who is the basically heading the office, where he is going ahead and making sure that he will formulate, control and supervise the foreign trade policy. Now, foreign trade policy 2015 and 20, who gave you the power to go ahead and make the foreign trade policy? Someone should have given you the power, no? So, we have the legislation governing the foreign trade policy, which is the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation act 1992 which goes ahead and gives in that section number five is there and section number five goes ahead and gives central government the power that central government may from time to time formulate announce by notification what in the official gadget the foreign trade policy now central government can go ahead and announce central government ka department is only depart government ka department is only department of commerce in that we have the director general of foreign trade who will basically go ahead and make this foreign trade policy, control this foreign trade policy and supervise this foreign trade policy. 
now i hope you guys are able to understand that the foreign trade policy now what are the guiding principle when he is going ahead and formulating the foreign trade policy what is he looking at he will go ahead and see the generation of employment should be there yes everyone foreign trade policy should be as such because of which employment is generated increased value addition keeping in mind with making in india vision india may india may the goods which are produced india may lot of value addition should be there in the goods so that india make in india is being promoted might be you get raw material from outside india but in india you produce for an example tesla wanted to come to india what they went in and told them you set up a plant in india we'll go ahead and help you with everything they wanted to generate employment they wanted to go ahead and see to it that make in india vision is being fulfilled are we guys able to understand so government ka main objective is what to go ahead and make sure that make in india is done are we clear so what are the guiding principles when they are making the foreign trade policy they want to see that sir first of all generation of employment should be there secondly increase value addition in india should be there make in india has to be promoted then ease of doing business baba all the importer exporters should be having ease of doing business they should not be having lot of headaches simplicity should be there icegate.gov.in has been introduced now in icegate you can go ahead and online file all your documents etc so they are trying to do ease of doing business the and trade facilitation by simplifying and extensive use of e governance online e governance is basically used encouraging commerce e commerce export of specified product online e commerce ka export of specified product they are promoting encouraging manufacture and export they want more ex more india may you produce more you produce in india and you export foreign currency will come so they are promoting scz eou stp software technology park electronic hardware technology park biotechnology park these people they are given lot of benefits in foreign trade policy so they can import without paying any duty they can export and earn foreign currency so they have been given lot of benefits the next one over here is duty credit script baba government is going in and telling ramesh this item is make in india you export this if you export this now i will give you chocolate chocolate is script sir i am making 2% less profit if i am going in and exporting no percent no problem this 2% i'll give you chocolate i'll give you script you can use the script to pay your custom duties so government will give what duty credit script to encourage what export of specified product whichever make in india product is not going outside india they will promote it then export of service also then they are telling special effort to resolve quality complaint and trade dispute india and some exporter imp exporter importer etc whoever is there anyone has a dispute which is there from outside india see might be i went and exported to us and there is a trade dispute which is there might be the goods which i have sent is bad india's name will go bad so they make sure that all those trade disputes are being resolved so these are the guiding principle the main guiding principle is generation of employment and going ahead and making sure that make in india vision is there india may more 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 production is there is of doing business is there now for going ahead and making sure that this make in india initiative is being uh, this all this guiding principle what are the measure they have taken supporting the guiding principle means what have they had done okay you are thinking that i will go ahead and do ease of doing business what is that you have gone ahead and done they have gone ahead and introduced measures to support the guiding principle number 1 number of document for importer export reduced to 3 if you go ahead and see if you go ahead and import from india or export from india they are telling if you export you need bill of lading airway bill or railway receipt number or postal receipt bus that's all plus commercial invoice come packing list sir what do you mean by packing list in a container whatever is being packed that is known as a packing list then sir shipping bill or bill of export or postal bill of export it means only three document so ease of doing business is coming then they are telling import ka case mein also same whatever your bill of lading etc is there invoice is there plus import ka case mein you need bill of entry and your clearance will be done so they are going ahead and making sure that ease of doing business is there how by going ahead and reducing the number of document only to 3 remember what are the documents which are uh, required for import and export how ease of doing business has come then 24 baba are you guys able to understand the foreign trade policy which is there is basically the main policy the boss has framed the policy custom department is just following the policy are you guys able to understand everyone 24 bar 7 custom clearance has to be there it means custom department has to make sure that yes 24 bar 7 clearance has to be given so sir 24 bar 
seven space clearance for special import single window scheme has to be introduced and swift has been introduced single window clearance has been introduced in custom so whatever is told in foreign trade policy has to be followed by the custom they should make sure if foreign trade policy may they told these goods are restricted these goods are prohibited custom department has to make sure that when goods come so foreign trade policy basically it is under the ministry of commerce custom cbi custom is under the cbic which is ministry of finance so both are different but these people frame the policy those people follow the policy he is the main boss those people are going ahead and making sure that yes the policy which they have told is being implemented are we clear everyone everyone over here then prior online facility baba these people told i don't know you have to go ahead and see, make ease of business you have to introduce swift to so custom may swift has to be introduced they are telling prior online facility for filing shipping bill before shipment has to be introduced so now shipping bill has to be filed first then late export order is given then people go ahead and export so sir prior filing of shipping bill has to be introduced online filing of application to obtain import export code and various authorization and script if you go ahead and see over here if i go to the director general of foreign trade ka office director general of foreign trade dgft director general of foreign trade ka office if you go over here you will be able to see a fast baba just a minute if you see over here online filing of import export code is there are you able to see now yes, sir i want chocolate sir you can go over here one minute you can go over here and see lot of things have been made online now can you see over here sir i want an advance authorization i want a dfia i want export promotion capital goods ke liye authorization can you see lot of things have been made online now so basically they are trying to get e governance online filing of forms so they are telling online filing of application before to obtain import export code and various authorization or script also you can go ahead and take it online so these are these are the basically uh, measures which have been taken to support the guiding principle now sir what is the role of the director general of foreign trade he will formulate he will make the policy he will control the policy and he will supervise the foreign trade policy he will issue authorization for import or export see baba sir i want to import sir you go to him sir please let me go ahead and import duty free i don't have the money to pay the duty if i pay the duty later you will give me 98% do one thing no sir give me an authorization you can go and ask him authorization over here can you see this is the director general of foreign trade ka office but the director general of foreign trade is not one person it is like they have lot of regional offices which are there you can go to the regional office also head office is also there are we clear so you have to go to the regional office now see here sir can you see i want an advance authorization can you see over here you can go and ask him online advance authorization next sir grant of import export code did i just now show it show it to you that sir you can go online and apply sir monitoring the export obligation he told see you get free capital goods but you have to export at least you have to go ahead and get foreign currency six time of the duty which you have saved he will tell you those export obligation are you going ahead and meeting or not he will make sure that you are meeting it if you are not meeting he will penalize all those things are there issue orders with respect to interpretation of provision of foreign trade policy if you have any doubt in foreign trade policy understanding he will go ahead and issue order and if i don't if the, sir i don't know how to classify my goods he can go ahead and help you with classification also everyone over here now when you read the foreign trade policy no there are nine chapters which are there in foreign trade policy if you actually go to the foreign trade policy it's a big book which is there now nine chapters all are there applicable for you but out of that the seven chapters which are there are the most important one now every chapter what i have gone ahead and created is small small paragraph which one, how much you should go ahead and read everyone the first chapter can you see chapter number 1 chapter number 2 if you see over here chapter number 3 is there then if you go next you have chapter number 4 is there you have chapter number 5 is there 6 is there if you see below chapter number 7 is there other than that one chapter number 7 and 8 is there okay total bakwas everyone over here now let's go ahead and start with the first first chapter now for 5 marks how much more will you read correct nine chapters are there for five marks so basically they have gone ahead and summarized the chapters also and okay everyone legal framework and trade facilitation first we'll understand legal framework which is the law which is guiding 
द क्रिएशन ऑफ फॉरन ट्रेड पॉलिसी फॉरन ट्रेड पॉलिसी रेगुलेशन एंड डेवलपमेंट एक्ट एवरी वन हियर द लीगल फ्रेमवर्क वॉट इज द लॉ फॉरन ट्रेड डेवलपमेंट एंड रेगुलेशन एक्ट टू थाउजेंड नाइनटीन नाइनटी टू इज गोइंग एड एंड हेल्पिंग यू इन दैट इज द लॉ विच हैज गॉन एड एंड टोल्ड ओके फाइव यू कैन गो एड एंड क्रिएट ए फॉरन ट्रेड पॉलिसी लीगल बेसिस एंड ट्रेड फेसिलिटेशन लीगल बेसिस इज द फॉरन ट्रेड पॉलिसी इज नोटिफाइड बाई सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट इन एक्सरसाइज विद power confirmed under section number 5 of the foreign trade development and regulation act duration of the foreign trade policy is till what date baba this should be 31st okay till 30th of september 2022 sir dgft may by measure of public notice notify handbook of procedure appendices and iat form everyone listen gst may law was created the gst act went ahead and gave further power to go ahead and make the rules the same way foreign trade policy is created now in the foreign trade policy they have written that further whatever forms to operate the foreign trade policy any rules regulation is required who can go ahead and create dgft G dgft may by public notice notify what handbook of procedure baba procedures means what rules etc only for act it is rules which are given the same way he can go ahead and notify the handbook of procedure appendices and iat form iat form means all those forms which will be required in your foreign trade basically for doing foreign trade whatever forms etc will be required sir for an example i want import export code which form will be required all those things they will go ahead and notify everyone over here so basically i hope you guys are able to understand that customs is basically going ahead and following just what is told by the foreign trade policy are we clear in foreign trade policy if something is restricted prohibited customs has to make sure that you can't get it from outside india or you can't import export from outside india also can i go ahead everyone next sir trade facilitation and ease of doing business can you see over here trade facilitation what do you mean by trade facilitation they are trying to create simplified procedure and use of e governance objective of trade trade facilitation is priority of the government for cutting down what transaction cost and time dgft is committed to function as a facilitator of import and export are we clear everyone e sir now as a trade facilitation measure what have they done issue of import export code electronically online you go and apply you will get import export code they have gone ahead and launched 24 bar 7 clearance swift has been launched as ease of doing business sir facility of deferred payment you remembered everyone deferred payment facility has been has been given to authorized public undertaking it has been given to authorized economic operator tier 2 tier 2 tier 2 and tier 3 how why is it given because of the trade facilitation measure of foreign trade policy then single window interface for facilitating trade and authorized economic operator program sir all these people who are there they are enrolled under authorized economic operator program those people are trustworthy people of the government are we clear everyone so this all these programs have been launched under trade facilitation only now they have gone ahead and i told you that they can go ahead and create handbook of procedure so we have volume 1 and we have volume 2 volume 1 says about the procedural aspect of foreign trade policy and appendices and the various iat niat form right everyone now procedural aspect and forms are basically it's the rules which are guiding the act are we clear so for policy it is the procedures for act rules policy procedures can i go ahead everyone next sir now volume 2 is cion cion is required what do you mean by cion standard input output norm everyone listen what do you mean by standard output input norm you went and told the dgft that sir i want to go ahead and import duty free shirt ka cloth sir see sir i have an order for 1 lakh shirt if you allow me to import cloth duty free then i will export and get foreign currency he will become very happy but he'll allow you to import only that much cloth which is told in standard input output norm if standard input output norm me it is told see standard input for the output output is 1 lakh shirt for one shirt 1 meter is required he will allow you how many units 1 lakh meter he will allow you so that is told in standard input output norm what is told in the standard input out sir to make one bottle 1 kg steel is required i have 1 lakh bottles ka order what to do 1 lakh kg he will go ahead and tell me okay you can go ahead and import then duty free imports are based on cion sir dgft is basically the policy maker the boss 
for import and export. Customs ensure that the policies are implemented. Everyone over here. Now, sir, DGFT, Director General of Foreign Trade, does not have an army of its own. They go ahead and take the help of, hey, customs, you make sure you don't allow this import, you don't allow this export. They will go ahead and tell the custom. Now, they will go ahead and tell the RBI, hey, RBI, you make sure foreign currency has come. Are we clear, everyone? So, all these people are basically supporting whom? The Director General of Foreign Trade. Other authorities dealing with the foreign trade policy is Ministry of Finance, ka CBIC, Customs and GST Department, facilitate implementation of foreign trade policy. Custom department is responsible for clearance of import or export goods. Right, everyone? Then, RBI formulates policy relating to management of money, including payment and receipt of foreign currency. Also monitors receipt and payment. You told, sir, I will go ahead and export. I told, okay, export on foreign currency. Are you earning or not earning? The RBI will make sure that you are going ahead and getting that money. State GST departments also go ahead and support him in going ahead and implementation of the foreign trade policy. Now, this was your chapter number one, legal framework. What is the legal framework everyone? Foreign trade policy 1520 is the legal, is created under the Foreign Trade Development and Regulation Act 1992. Section number five, went ahead and gave the power. Then, sir, trade facilitation and ease of doing business. Baba, they have gone ahead and simplified the procedure, ease of doing business they have got. So that in ease of business, ease of doing business, what they have done? They have got import export code, online application, 24 bar 7 facilities there for clearance, SWIFT has been launched, etc. Deferred payment facility is allowed so that quick clearance can be done. All those things are under the foreign trade policy. Now, everyone over here, general provision relating to import and export they are telling exports and imports are free unless regulated means all the imports and exports are free unless they are regulated sir except when they are regulated by prohibition sometimes they go ahead and prohibit sometimes they go ahead and impose some restriction or sometimes exclusively to state trading enterprises as laid down in the ITC HS everyone listen to me very carefully when you go to the director general DGFT over here if you see, see, can you see import and export policy? For every, you remember HSN code say we did classification under custom. There we did to find out, in customs we do classification to find out what is the rate of duty. But here we find out the correct classification to find out whether, what is the import and export policy. Is it freely importable? Is it restricted? Is it prohibited? Everyone see. For an example, this is also import export code HS. But this is import export code harmonized system for telling you the policy, not the rate. And here they will go ahead and tell you, sir, these are the items which are prohibited. Can you see over here? These are the items which are restricted. Can you see? So here, import policy view. If you go ahead and see over here, how many chapters I had gone ahead and told you? There are approximately 98 chapters I had gone ahead and told you. All the chapters ke liye. Can you, do you remember? The first chapter was live animal. Now live animal may, sir, can I go ahead and import? Can you see import policy, export policy, both are being told? Import policy, export policy. Whether this item can you import? Whether this item can you export? Who has told this import export policy? Sir, DGFT and customs has to make sure that, sir, nobody gets that item if it is prohibited or restricted. Restricted may authorization is required. Everyone, if I see the import policy over here, you will see, see, these are the items here. Sir, this pure breed is restricted, means you need a permission for getting this. Are you guys able to understand? Now, see, everywhere it is restricted. Yes, everyone? Now, if I go ahead and tell you, supposingly, uh, coffee tea. Coffee tea may import policy. They will go ahead and say, Sir, free, free, free. You can get all these items. Free, 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 free. For some item, if they see, see, light, here, light, black, pepper, black, pepper, all these are prohibited. As per the foreign trade policy, it is being prohibited. Uh, can you see over here? Now, if they have told, who has told in the foreign trade policy? DGFT, hey, prohibited. Customs have to make sure if you are getting from outside, hey, prohibited. So, customs is basically acting for whom? The DGFT. Not DGFT, for the foreign trade policy. I hope everyone is clear, everyone. Now, so they are going ahead and telling, ex uh, generally, import and exports are free. Unless they are regulated, prohibited or restricted. Can you see over here? I have, if you see over here, you will be able to see, 
regulate uh, can you see the items are restricted can you see the items are prohibited this items which are restricted prohibited restricted item you will be able to get only after you go ahead and take the permission sir prohibited item you can't get it at all sir state trading enterprises government ka some organizations are there through them only you can go ahead and import can you import so you call the uh, dubai ka person hey send me one liter oil petrol i want one barrel oil you send me can you do it not possible why because that has to be imported only through state trading enterprises otherwise everyone will say hey oil price will go up hey you do one thing one full barrel you send me i will go ahead and refine in my home can you do it no baba those items you can't go ahead and import those they have gone ahead and told you these are the item can you see rice basmati copra broken rice motor spirit all this petrol etc you can't get it it has to be imported only through state trading enterprises which are basically organizations and i i'll be talking about it can i go ahead everyone so sir first of all did you understand the second one over here is mandatory document only three documents may import export will happen sir authorization is not you went to the dgft sir allow me to import free raw material i will not pay duty i will export he told hey get lost run away you are telling no i want it baba authorization is not your right no person can claim authorization as a right and dgft shall have the power only if he dreams that ha ah, foreign currency is going to come he will give it to you they will tell hey run away sir dgft have power to refuse to grant or renew the same with under the within the director general uh, foreign trade development and regulation act everyone over here indian trade classification indian trade classification harmonized system of export and import sir it's a compilation of code of all the merchandise goods for import or export sir india maintains nationalized hs of eight digit which is their hsn code is how much eight digit sir the import or export baba here we will not read sir first schedule custom duty rate ek second schedule export duty rate baba they have gone ahead and told in the first schedule over here the import policy did i show you the import policy now whether restricted pre etc sir schedule 2 so the import export policy for all the goods are indicated against each itc hs if you guys go ahead and see over here against each i against each item can you see over here import export policy is told see sir this is the import policy so for against every item it is told whether it is free import policy whether it is free sir whether it is restricted prohibited they have gone ahead and told so against every itc hs you told sir my goods are classifying in this in customs if you tell me that classification will give you rate but in foreign trade policy if you classify you will get whether this, this item is freely exportable importable prohibited restricted or only you can do import and export through state trading enterprises are you guys clear so you will have to go ahead and see over here see the import export policies for all goods are indicated against each if i eat code basically hsn code schedule 1 will give you import policy schedule 2 will give you export policy are you guys able to link it to the website which i am showing you yes sir policy is with respect to each code sir each code whether it is prohibited item not permitted restricted with permission you can get it sir state trading enterprise i'll talk about it okay free do not require any license or permission restricted need some permission sir prohibited so you can't get only prohibited item you can't get it they have told in baggage also you can't get so customs has to make sure are we clear everyone next sir interpretation of the policy who will do the interpretation any doubt dgft the boss director general decision of the dgft shall be final and binding with respect to interpretation of policy classification provision in handbook appendices and format sir what do you mean by import export code they can go ahead and ask you in the exam sir it import export code no export or import without import export code did i show you over here that you have to go and apply for online then 10 characters alpha numeric number man not number mandatory for import or export application is this form with applicable fees shall be submitted with the dsc baba digital signature application shall be submitted online in the dgft.gov.in did i show it to you sir dgft dgft.gov.in see here 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 apply today you apply okay everyone 
नेक्स्ट सर डोंट डू इट नॉट रिक्वायर्ड देन विद द फॉलोइंग डॉक्यूमेंट डिजिटल फोटो फोटो ऑफ द एप्लीकेंट कॉपी ऑफ द पैन कैंसल चेक ऑफ द एंटिटी नाउ यू नो व्हाट हैपन पैन इज इंपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट कोड विद इफेक्ट फ्रॉम 1st ऑफ जुलाई 2017 योर पैन नंबर व्हिच इज देयर दैट विल ओनली बी योर इंपोर्ट एक्सपोर्ट कोड बट यू कांट गो एंड से that sir i don't have to up, up, uh, apply you have to apply they will allocate your pan only only after they allocate your pan as your import export code that's an import export code otherwise it is only pan can i go ahead no sir from today i will also start importing exporting my pan is my ic baba you have to take approval from him first then now if goods are liable for, for gst when you are going ahead and filing your bill of entry you should also go ahead and mention your gst and number because you will get the credit then sir import export code allocated to an applicant is permanent unless cancelled sir un holder un issued by gst and number and authenticated by the dgft also has to be used basically when they are going ahead and importing exporting they can go ahead and use their uin number unique identification number then sir export or import of restricted goods only in accordance with authorization either you have to go ahead and take authorization from dgft or permission in accordance with the prescribed procedure the next one over here is state trading enterprises there are some items which i just went ahead and showed you sir i want petrol in my home one full drum i will fill and keep every day i will only fill in my car baba not allowed see state trading enterprises are government or non governmental enterprises including marketing board which deals with what goods for export and for imports they or any goods import or export of which is governed by exclusive or special privileges granted to st may be imported or exported by st as per the condition specified in itc hs everyone over here if i go ahead and show you over here see here state trading enterprises item all these are all state trading enterprises and they'll tell you the policy also can you guys see over here see sir superior kerosene oil i want superior kerosene oil you called outside india and got it you can't do it you have to get it through them are we clear everyone these are the items urea you all these things you can't get it and they have told what is the policy can i go ahead everyone see they have told the policy conditions etc everyone over here they are telling dgft may grant an authorization to any person to import or export notified goods notified for exclusively trading through state trading enterprise dgft can give authorization to any person reliance went and told sir we have to import crude oil from outside india allow us to so dgft might go ahead and allow them are we clear everyone rakesh went and told till tell i okay, get lost authorization is not your right can i go ahead everyone now why we went ahead and understood chapter number 1 chapter number 1 went ahead and told legal framework and trade facilitation second chapter went ahead and told sir general provision regarding import and export the third chapter which is there baba this i'll talk at the last okay now the third chapter which is there is telling export from india scheme everyone listen to me very carefully they have launched very scheme are chocolate so that people are very excited ah ha ha i'll get chocolate so they will go ahead and export correct or not yeah they have to show you chocolate Don't only then you will be happy so they will tell you hey you export i will give you this i will give you that i will give you star you will become status holder full status i will give you all those things they want to give so that so people will go ahead and export export from india scheme baba their main objective is to export 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 on foreign currency import restrict make in india objective to provide reward to exporter to offset infrastructural inefficiencies and associated costs sir if, if i go i'm going if i'm going ahead and exporting this and sir too much of loss is there okay don't worry i will give you scripts nature of the reward is duty credit script shall be granted as reward under rod tep which i am going to explain later are we clear everyone now they are telling scripts or goods imported uh using the scripts are freely transferable either the scripts which are issued to you sir i got a script chocolate you can give it to your friend also or you can import the goods using those script pay the basic custom duty using the script and those goods also you can go ahead and transfer to your friend and can be used what can you use the script for payment of basic custom duty additional duties of custom but not gst scripts are valid for how many months 24 months now in order to go ahead and encourage people to export from india they give status 
status holder who are very very big people who are going ahead and exporting in huge quantity they are telling status holder business leaders who have excelled in their international trade and have successfully contributed to countries foreign trade who are the status holder are baba status they'll put stars you know stars will be put on you that you are a status holder business leader these are business leader you would have seen that surat ka one exporter is there diamond exporter he is going ahead and exporting so big exports which are there they all those people are status holder they are getting huge money into india which are foreign currency indian government is very happy with them and telling ah you are status holder so state business leaders who have excelled in international trade and have successfully contributed to countries foreign trade are known as status holder all exporters of goods and service having isc shall be eligible for recognition okay everyone it is not that only one person is eligible any person is eligible but first you prove yourself recognition depends upon export performance applicant shall be categorized as status holder as such means status holder upon achievement of export performances everyone over here they have told if you perform only then you are status holder otherwise nothing holder can i go ahead everyone here during the current and preceding 3 years ka performance they will see one year you perform because covid was there exported mask etc too much next year onwards no performance they are telling those people are not status holder they are telling status holder means during the current year and preceding two financial three financial year will see in case of gems and jewelries two financial year last two financial year ka performance will see and if you are export performance which if you are exporting by c then fob if you are exporting by road it is for so they are telling get sir freight on road and free on board they are telling sir if you are exporting if you are one star you will be given one star when your exports are 3 million us dollar sir not 3 rupees 3 million us dollar that is your current year ka performance and last 3 years ka performance will be seen then sir they are seeing two star will be given 25 million us dollar three star 100 million four star 500 million five star 2000 million now all these people who are given status will have lot of benefits which are there under foreign trade policy they are telling privileges authorization and custom clearance for export or import on self declaration they can do self declaration and they can get import and export clearances fixation of cion baba standard input output norm sir i want to get these goods into india free but i don't know what is the cion they will fix it for you within 60 days no delays within 60 days by the norms committee exemption from compulsory negotiation or documents through bank they are not required to give bank guarantee and all too much then exemption from furnishing see exemption from bank guarantee all these compulsory documents which are there those are also not required sir two star and above can establish their export house houses so if you are a status holder you can own own a warehouse you can get goods keep it over there manufacture on your own and export outside india are you guys able to understand so in customs we learned about the warehouse here we are learning who can establish their own warehouse three star or above will be entitled to accredited client program you will be a accredited accredited client program means you are a accredited partner of the government government is selling yes he is an indian who is going and in importing exporting so you are accredited by the government then baba see i am not teaching you all these things which are accredited client program not required enough everyone three star or above shall be entitled to accredited client program entitled to export freely exportable item free of cost for export promotion they will give you a hey, you can export sample sir limit gems and jewelry wala one minute no no exporter of gems and jewelry articles of gold and precious metal he can export only how much sample 1 crore ka up and or 2% of average annual realization during the preceding three financial year last three years mein what was your average realization suppose in last three years you are realizing 100 100 crore rupees every year 100 crore ka 2% 2 crore or 1 crore whichever is lower are we clear for other than this all these people gems and jewelry gold wala people other people can go ahead and export 2% of the export realization during the preceding three license year are we clear everyone if they go ahead and ask you about status holder very very important for exam please remember now 
the next one over here the la the third page which is there is the most important page which is there everyone over here now this is rod tep scheme everyone listen earlier there was meis scheme and seis scheme merchandise export from india scheme and services export from india scheme what is merchandise export if you are exporting goods from india government used to give chocolate saying ramesh these bottles made in india bottles why are you not exporting i told sir these bottles if i am exporting this other bottle no sir i am getting more profit this bottle two percent less profit is there they used to give you two percent script saying okay keep chocolate are we clear that was under merchandise export if you are a service export from india scheme if you are exporting services then they used to give under cease script used to be given but now meis was not as per the international organization which is their world custom organization they told that sir this is not done mei scheme is not right so it was not as per the international parameters and hence it was removed and sei scheme ici has removed from your book are we clear and now government has launched one new scheme which is rod tep scheme which we have to go ahead and learn this is one of the most important scheme which they can go ahead and ask you everyone over here now so sir what is rod tep from 1st of january 2021 mes has been phased out and remission of duty remission of duty and taxes on exported product sir if i am going in and exporting some product on which i have gone ahead and paid some duty that duty i have not got duty drawback anywhere they are telling still that duty ka rodtp scheme mein some chocolate will be given to you are we clear everyone they are telling remission of duties and taxes on the exported product benefits shall be available to exporter are we clear mis is not there don't worry still you go ahead and export we will give you rodtp mein benefit i will show you how is rodtp See, can you see RODTP? Yes, everyone. Are you here? Here, regulatory framework. Can you see RODTP? You saw C on over there. C on is also there. See now, everyone over here. Can you see the rate under RODTP? Now they are telling over here. See, Ramesh, you go and export fresh water. We will give you RODTP me percentage of the FOB. Baba, additionally they are giving you. Hey, take chocolate. Zero point five percent. Can you see over here for every item? Whenever a person is going in and exporting, they have given under RODTP that sir, you will get this much percentage of the FOB as, as what? As RODTP ka benefit. You know where they will put this benefit. You remember e credit ledger under customs also will be maintained now. In that customs ka e credit ledger, they will go ahead and put this RODTP ka benefit. Either they will give physical script, but nowadays physical script and all is not given. They put the money in your e credit ledger, which will be maintained under the custom automated system. are we clear everyone everyone over here listen so what they are telling is remission of duty and taxes on exported product benefits shall be available to exporter and sir it aims to boost export yes or no they are giving you chocolate chocolate will boost export saying that yes they are giving me 2.5% of the fob as duty return so sir i imported exported as per all industry rate etc whatever you are getting duty drawback all those things you leave it under custom other than that under ftp they are telling we'll give you fob ka 1 percentage also as rodtp scheme ke under benefit tick it aims to boost export by allowing reimbursement of taxes percentage way of reward is to be issued in form of transferable script or electronic script means they will give you either transferable script or online script which is there are we clear or might be they can go ahead and credit it to your e credit ledger which is there right everyone next the scheme is based on globally accepted principle why mes was deleted because it was not based on globally accepted principle right everyone baba india is a member of lot of uh, communities which are there worldwide now you can't go ahead and start giving chocolate to your people saying do this do this do this export this item i'll give you more chocolate so that was not in in par with the globally accepted principle hence they had to delete it the scheme is based rodtp is based on the principle that taxes and duties should not be exported baba export the goods not your taxes because if you export the taxes the goods will become expensive if the goods are expensive in the international market your no one will buy so it says the scheme is based on international it's it's on the principle globally accepted principle that 
taxes and duties should not be accepted uh, sorry exported and it should be either exempted or remitted it should either be exempted on your exported product means if i am going in and exporting something the duties which are there should be exempted or if i paid them they should give it back to me everyone this scheme provides for remission remission means reduce remission of the amount in the form of duty credit scrape credited in exporter's ledger account with custom what is the ledger account everyone e credit ledger they are telling we will go ahead and give you duty credit scrape everyone what is the objective to refund the unrefundable whatever duty is taxes you were not getting the refund earlier now they are telling we will go ahead and give you in the rodtp scheme everyone here regulate uh, see rodp when you go you will see over here see they are telling all this item may can you see over here 2.5% per kg with cap that sir per kg you will go ahead and fix how much 16 rupees only can i go ahead everyone next otherwise people will again start cheating to refund currently unrefunded tax rodtp scheme was introduced sir number one duties taxes levied at the center state local levy born on the exported product sir these are the taxes which are levied i am not getting a refund of it sir please do something then they will go ahead and give you rodt which is there are we clear then including prior stage cumulative idts indirect taxes on your goods and service in the production then such indirect taxes in respect of distribution of the exported product which has been basically born on the goods what are the silent features number one it seeks to refund to the exporter, exporter the embedded central state local levies or taxes that are so far not been refunded or rebated means what are the taxes you were not refunded now they will go ahead and refund under rodtp they will not refund you they will go ahead and give you chocolate which is 2.5 percent 0.5 percent etc they will give you as a script duty credit script is issued a in lieu of remission of duty or levy or on any material used in the manufacture or processing of goods for carrying out what for carrying out an operation on such goods that are exported so they are telling over here that sir we will go ahead and give you what duty credit is issued they will issue you duty credit in lieu of remission of any duties taxes levy chargeable on any material used in manufacture or processing of goods or for carrying out any operations on such goods in india that are exported where such duties taxes are not exempted not remitted or credited in any other scheme so if you have gone ahead and paid any taxes in india which were not being refunded which were not being remitted under any other scheme then they are going ahead and telling we will give you in rodtp some little scripts which are there sir duty credit is issued against b point can you see over here against export of notified goods under ftp i have gone ahead and showed you the notified goods also can i go ahead everyone number two sir what are the silent features i am teaching you bullet number one done bullet number two done bullet number three sir value of the goods for calculation of script will be the declared fob now fob people will go ahead and declare more so they told market price ka 1.5 time maximum are we clear everyone on that you will be given what duty script then the next one over here is refund in the form of duty credit would be created to the e credit ledger under the custom automated system see i am teaching you the silent features of the rodtp then sir duty credit shall be used only to pay basic custom duty then duty credit that is credit are freely transferable to other importers no rebate with respect to duties and taxes already exempted remitted or credited then who are the people who are eligible all exporters of eligible rodtp exported item the list which i showed you are all those are rodtp ka items if you are going ahead and exporting those items you can go ahead and take trips now what happened government will go ahead and find out in the industry that okay this item when it is exported what are the taxes which are borne by a person which are not being given back to him so government fixes one average percentage that on an average a person who is exporting this item this duty is still borne by him baba do you think i will bear the duty i will go ahead and make the goods expensive and export outside india do you think i am a fool that i will go ahead and bear the duty so government went ahead and told under rodtp we will give you script don't go ahead and send indian goods ka tax ka burden outside india everyone over here reward will be given what are they telling rebate would be granted at the rate 
which is a percentage of the FOB with a value cap per unit. Can you see over here? I hope you guys remember, I showed you value cap per unit will be there and percentage will also be given. Percentage will be given on the value cap. Otherwise, people will go ahead and start showing more. Then they are telling over here, for some, for some item, a fixed rebate per unit may also be fixed. Are we clear? Fixed amount also they can go ahead and say here they told percentage, they can tell one shirt, one rupee. Then, sir, rebate is not dependent on export realization. Means, sir, export means taking from India, outside India, over export. You will go ahead and take the ROTT PICA benefit. They are telling, but non-receipt of foreign exchange within time limit as per FEMA deemed that rebate was never allowed. It will be deemed that rebate was never allowed to you. Ineligible supplies or items or categories, export of import, export of imported goods in same form. Baba, government is promoting make in India. You got some goods from outside India and exporting as such. They are telling RODT benefit will not be given. Export of imported goods in the same form. Export through transhipment. I got from outside India in one ship, unloaded, loaded in another ship and exported. Is it? They will give you RODT nothing. Make in India. Think always make in India. Export product subject to minimum export price or duty. If they have gone ahead and if there is some export product on which minimum export price is fixed, for those products, RODTP scheme will not be given. Products which are restricted or prohibited under FTP, they are telling, first of all, we don't want to go ahead and export this or these are restricted and I will give you chocolate also for exporting. They will not give. Products manufactured in electronic hardware technology park, biotechnology park, Sir, all this electronic hardware technology park, biotechnology park, already they are given a lot of benefit. Whenever they are buying, no duty is there. Again, what chocolate do you want? Again, what benefit do you want? Next. Sir, deemed export. I will go ahead and teach about deemed export. For deemed export also, you will not go ahead and get any scripts. Product manufactured in warehouse. Baba, you got from outside India. In the warehouse only you manufactured and send it outside India. Did you pay any duty on that product? So they are going ahead and telling all those goods which are manufactured in the warehouse will not give any RODTP. Products manufactured or exported by 100% EOU also, they will not give you any benefit. Everyone, remember one thing, they can go ahead and ask a small question on RODTP. Please be very careful about it. Everyone or over here now. Now, this was chapter number 3. Chapter number 4 goes ahead and says, a duty exemption or remission scheme. Sir, what do you mean by remission scheme? Everyone listen. Do you remember duty drawback? Do you remember duty drawback? One minute. See, foreign trade policy. Duty drawback. Sir, if you go ahead and import into India, 100% of the duty you pay, if you export, you will get how much duty drawback? 98%. Or as per all industry rate, etc. Right, everyone? Import X as such, then it is 98%. If you go ahead and import and then manufacture and export, it is all industry rate, brand rate, etc. I told sir, I want to import. Now, if I am an importer, I am telling sir, I want to import from outside India. I want to import from outside India, but I don't have money, sir. If I pay duty, sir, see, I will pay you, you will pay me back. What is the requirement? Let me import free and I will go ahead and export. You go to the Director General of Foreign Trade and tell him, sir, please, please let me go ahead. Director General of Foreign Trade, you please let me go ahead and import. Give me one letter. He will give you an advance authorization which you have to apply online only. If he gives you the advance authorization, you can go ahead and get it import without any duty but he will tell you see you have to show me dreams okay dreams you have to show him what is his dream foreign currency that sir when i get no goods i will spend only hundred dollar when i go ahead and export i will earn hundred and fifteen dollar value addition has to be shown to him are we clear see this was your remission scheme which is there we are now going ahead and not talking about remission scheme we are talking about duty exemption he's telling sir remission and all not required I will pay, take back, not required. I will not pay also. I will not take back also. That is duty exemption. Duty exemption enables duty-free import of inputs for export promotion, including replenishment of inputs or duty remission. Everyone over here. One scheme is advanced authorization scheme. One is duty-free import authorization. Sir, how do I go ahead and take this authorization? If you go ahead and see over here, the... 
DGFT का ऑफिस सी सर्विसेज इन सर्विसेज कैन यू सी एडवांस ऑथराइजेशन और डीएफआईए यू कैन गो एंड अप्लाई फॉर इट कैन आई गो एंड एवरीवन नाउ एवरीवन ओवर हियर दे आर टेलिंग व्हाट इज इट व्हाट इज एन एडवांस ऑथराइजेशन इट्स अ स्कीम टू इंपोर्ट इनपुट्स यूज्ड इन मैन्युफैक्चर ऑफ एक्सपोर्टेड गुड्स विदाउट पेमेंट ऑफ एनी ड्यूटी बट सब्जेक्ट टू एवैल्यूएशन ऑफ 15% दे आर टेलिंग यू कैन गेट इनपुट्स यू डोंट हैव टू पे एनी ड्यूटी इनपुट्स ओनली ओके एवरीवन बट सर यू हैव टू गो एंड मेक अ मिनिमम वैल्यूएशन ऑफ हाउ मच 15% your cif which was there was 100 your fob which is there should be at least 115 cif of the imported raw material was 100 dollars you have to get at least fob of how much 115 so that you earn that much next sir what are the material which is covered inputs which are physically incorporated in the exported goods means i am going ahead and making shirt and exporting they will tell okay shirt ka cloth you can get plus i told sir in addition to that fuel oil catalyst may also be allowed he can go ahead and allow you some other small small items also mandatory spares required to be exported with the resultant product might be i am going in and exporting a bike along with that i have to give some spares those also they will go ahead and allow you 10% of the cif of the advance authorization item reserved for ste state trading enterprises cannot be imported by against advance authorization always remember if i have got an advance authorization i only have to import it is actual user condition what is actual user condition if they have told in that if they have given you an advance authorization it is always actual user condition based means actual who has got the advance authorization he only has to go ahead and import it is never transferable i can't give it to my friend hey you import no problem no see you have to go and show the dgft sir i have an order for export 1 lakh unit ka export ka order is there sir i will get foreign currency only then he will give you an advance authorization but he will tell you i am giving you advance authorization but make sure you earn 15% sir minimum value addition is greater than equal to 15% tk case mein how much 50% standard input and output norm everyone listen import will be based on standard input output norm i told sir to make this bottle i need 1 kg of steel i will i have an order for 1 lakh unit sir you see i will get foreign currency 1 lakh unit ka order is there so 1 lakh kg he will allow you if it is told as per cion standard input output norm norms which are there i think you guys can see over here only yes everyone cion is given for every item they have gone ahead and fixed a cion can i go ahead everyone sir for my item cion is not there then what will happen then sir you can go ahead and do on the basis of self declaration or applicant specific prior fixation by the norm committee you can go to the norm committee and they can go ahead and fix for some people self ratification scheme is also allowed they can only go ahead and say the cion and they can go ahead and import then sir export obligation to be fulfilled within how much time 18 months from the date of issue then they are going ahead and telling who are the people who are exempted what are the sorry what are the what are the things which are exempted basic custom duty additional duties of custom what are the additional custom duties cvds are there safeguard duties are there all those will be you don't have to go ahead and pay it will be exempted sir igst and gst compensation says is also exempted till 30th june 2022 remember 30th june 2022 can we go ahead everyone now sir the same way how you got advance authorization see advance authorization is sir you went to the dgft you went to the dgft and told him sir i have a order i have an order in my hand sir please allow me to go ahead and import duty free i will make goods and export so he will allow you to import you will make the goods and you will go ahead and export right everyone but in dfi what happened here to you have gone ahead and shown him the order now here if sub in dfi what happened duty free import authorization is given you went and told dgft i hey, sir please give me advance authorization no he'll tell first prove yourself are we clear so you go ahead and make an application and tell sir i will prove myself you go ahead and export after you export to replenish means your stores would have got over your godown mein raw material would have got over to get your raw material back he will give you an duty free import authorization but duty free import authorization is based on what first export then he will allow you to import duty free import authorization will be given duty free import authorization is nothing other than replenishment whatever your raw material is used for export he will tell you now you can go ahead and 
important. Are you guys able to understand? But advance authorization was what? In advance. Before you go ahead and export, you take the advance authorization. Can we go ahead everyone? Here. It's a post exportation facility to import inputs used in the manufacture of exported product without payment of basic custom duty. I mean, they are telling whatever exported products were there, you already exported. Now, whatever inputs you have used it, we will go ahead and give you a duty free import authorization. Those inputs, you can fill your stores back by getting the inputs duty free. Can I go? Because first you export it. Next, everyone over here. So, first you have to go online and tell the DGFT that, sir, I am going to go ahead and export. First you have to go ahead and Tell him. Can you see over here one minute? See, first DFI may, one is advanced authorization, one is DFIA. For DFIA, first you have to inform him that, sir, I will go ahead and export. Once you go ahead and export, tell him, sir, I have exported. Then he will give you duty-free import authorization that for your next export, you can go ahead and import. Are we clear, everyone? Yes, sir, point is clear. Now, sir, only inputs required for production of goods is allowed. Here, inputs which are physically import. Uh, physically incorporated including fuel oil etc was also allowed mandatory spares was also allowed of the 10 percent of the cf value but here they are telling only inputs will be allowed basically a raw material will be allowed to be imported then in addition fuel will not be allowed here remember oil will be allowed catalyst may also be allowed next sir are they transferable or oh, this was not transferable but this is transferable remember this is transferable why sir I exported. I don't want input anymore. I will not export. I will give it to my friend. Let him import. So they are telling it is transferable. Here, actual user condition is not there. Are we clear everyone? Actual user condition is not there. But in this uh, other one which I had gone ahead and taught you, advanced authorization, my actual user condition is there. What is actual user condition? If it is given to me, only I can import. But in this DFI, actual user condition is not there. Given to me, I can transfer it to someone else and he can go ahead and import. Then it is telling value addition here is how much? 20%. Advanced authorization was how much? 15%. Sir, how do you find out value addition? Value addition is nothing other than FOB minus CIF divided by the CIF into 100 will give you the value addition. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Sir, DFI is issued only if Sion has been notified. Here, even if Sion is not there, on the basis of self ratification or self declaration or after fixation by the norm committee, they will go ahead and allow you. But here, only if Sion has been fixed, they will go ahead and give you DFIA. Are we clear everyone? The next one, export shall be completed within 12 months from the date of online application. Baba, you have to go online and say, sir, I will go ahead and export. Export should be completed within 12 months. Sir, only basic custom duty will be exempted over here. Here, all additional duty is also exempted. GST also exempted. But here, only basic custom duty you don't have to pay. When you are importing the inputs, no? Later, when you are importing the input based on DFIA, you don't have to go. Sir, who will make sure that you have DFIA? Custom department. Wherein, when you are importing, they will say, I show me the advance authorization. Show me the DFIA. Who will issue? DGFT. Are we clear everyone? Everyone, GST is always payable. Basic custom duty is not payable, but GST is always payable. Here GST is exempted. Here basic custom duty, additional duty, all are exempted. But here only basic custom duty. You and sir, every time I have to come for advance authorization, full year kill you give me one advance authorization. So Baba, annual advance authorization is also issued. Exporters with at least past two years performances means who are trustworthy annual advance authorization 300 percent of the fob of physical export in the preceding financial year and or for value multiplied by what one minute just a minute everyone over here listen 300 percent of the fob 300 percent of the fob value of physical export in the preceding financial year, in the preceding financial year, whatever I have gone ahead and exported, of that whatever was the FOB, of that how much they will give? 300%. Or FOR value, or FOR value, they are telling, see over here everyone, or FOR value of what? Deemed export in preceding financial year. FOR value of, 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 it should be multiplied means of, no? So of, of, Deemed export in the preceding financial year. Sir, what is FOR over here? 
free on road, freight on road. Everyone listen. Now in India, when you are going ahead and giving it to deemed export, Baba, if I give it to someone who will go ahead and export, do you remember anyone has an advance authorization? I gave it to him and he will go ahead and export. So my supply is a deemed export. So, or 1 crore, whichever is higher. What they are telling is 300% of the FOB or 100 crore, sorry, 1 crore, whichever is higher, will be basically given as an annual advance authorization. See over here, everyone. Sir, 300% of the FOB of physical export and or FOB of deemed export in case FOR of deemed export in case of physical in preceding financial year or 1 crore, whichever is higher. Done everyone. The next one over here is basically 300% of the last year ka FOB ka export or if you have supplied in India deemed export of that amount 300% or 1 crore whichever is higher. Everyone over here is the point clear till here. Chapter number 1 I went ahead and taught you which was legal framework and trade facilitation. Chapter number 2 I taught you general rules for import or export. RODTP since chapter number 3 I taught you which was export from India scheme. Status holder, I taught you. RODTP, I taught you. Chapter number 4, Advanced Authorization and DFIA, I went ahead and taught you. Now, sir, please allow me to import capital goods. If you allow me to import capital goods, I will make quality products and export, sir. I will get foreign currency. The time you say foreign currency, he will become very happy and give you export promotion capital goods ke liye authorization. Are we clear, everyone? Export promotion capital goods scheme. Sir, first import capital goods without payment of custom duty, but then you have to fulfill the export obligation. What is export obligation, everyone? You know what? He will tell you. You import from outside India capital goods, 100 crore ka capital goods. You don't pay 10 crore ka duty. I will, you don't have to pay, no problem. But sir, in your next six years, whatever duty I have gone ahead and you have not paid, no? How much duty you did not pay? 10 crore? 10 crore into 6 times, 60 crore incremental export has to be done. It is not what you are already exporting. Because of the machine, you show dream that my export will increase. So, your incremental export has to be 6 times. That is your export obligation. So, they are going ahead and telling, sir, you can go ahead and import, sir, first import capital goods without payment of custom duty, but then fulfill the export obligation. Sir, GST is also exempted up till 30th of June 2008. 22. It means custom duties are also not payable. GST is also not payable. Sir, what is post EPCG scheme? First, if what is post EPCG scheme is first you can go ahead and import capital goods. Then on full duty payment later, basic custom duty paid will be given back to you. Are we clear, everyone? In the form of freely duty, freely transferable duty credit script. Everyone, listen to me very carefully. One scheme which I told you is first get the get the capital goods. 10 crore ka duty is there. Don't pay the duty. Now, you can go ahead and manufacture the goods and export. But what they are telling is, your incremental export has, see what you are exporting earlier, same export has to be maintained. But 10 crore I have saved, no. In 6, you have to maintain 10 crore into 6. 60 crore you have to earn in the next 6 years and give it to me. That's your export obligation. Basically, foreign currency has to come in. 6 times of the duty saved. Everyone over here now, they are going ahead and telling what is post EPCG scheme. You go ahead and import, everyone, you import, you import. When you import the capital goods, you pay the duty. Later, this duty pay, whatever this basic custom duty was paid, no, they will go ahead and give it back to you in the form of scripts. See, in post EPCG scheme, first import capital goods on duty payment, later basic custom duty is remitted in the form of freely transferable duty script. Sir, specific export obligation is how much? 85%. They are telling over here your export obligation will be how much? Only 85%. Then, sir, next EPCG authorization can also be issued for import of capital goods under notified project import. Sir, a metro project is there, monorail project is there, industrial project is there, any project, airport development project is there, all those projects are being notified, metro rail, monorail, all these projects are being notified by the government. If for that you are going ahead and importing, they are telling EPCG authorization can also be issued for import of capital goods under project import to make a big project which has been notified by the government. If you need any plant and machinery, you can go ahead and import and government will give you the EPCG authorization.
Imports under this scheme is subject to fulfillment of export obligation based on the duty saved. You saved 10 crore ka duty, 10 crore into 6 times, 60 crore you have to go ahead and get. Export obligation is how much? How much export you have to do? 60 crore. That is the incremental. Next, sir, two export obligations are imposed. Specific exporting obligation, which is export obligation equal to six time of the duty saved. You saved supposedly 10 crore ka duty. How much do you have to go ahead and export? 60 crore you have to go ahead and export. That is your incremental export. And it says such export obligation to be fulfilled in how many year? Six year from the date of issue of authorization. Average export obligation also you have to maintain. What is average export? Sir, I was already exporting 100 crore. Whatever you are exporting, that too you have to maintain. They are telling export obligation mentioned above shall be over and above the average level of export achieved by the applicant in the preceding three license year for the same or similar product with the overall export obligation period. Everyone listen. Last year, whatever you are gone ahead and exported. Last three license year, whatever you are gone ahead and exported, of that average will be taken. Last three years, if you had exported on an average 10 crore, that too you have to do. Additionally, you have to go ahead and earn and give them how much? 60 crore over the next. Sir, suppose if this year duty saved is 10 crore. 10 crore into say 6 is 60 crore. 60 crore over the next 6 years, you will have to earn and give. That is over and above the over and above the general export which you are going ahead and doing. It is not that, sir, general export which you are doing, that came down and you are telling, I am only fulfilling the specific export obligation. No. One is your export obligation, one is your one is your specific export obligation, duty saved ka three times. Incremental export has to be done. Can I go ahead everyone? Next. Sir, you can procure capital goods used in production, before production, pre-production, post-production. Okay. Before production, if you need any capital goods. During production, if you need any capital goods. After production, if you need any capital goods. From global or domestic market, anywhere you can go ahead and buy. So, everyone, listen. If you go ahead and Director General of Foreign Trade went ahead and gave you a capital goods, uh, export promotion capital goods ka authorization, you can go ahead and import from outside India also. And you have to pay in Forex. But sir, can I go ahead and take it from a person in India also? Yes, Baba. When you go ahead and take it from a person in India, it is known as deemed export. I hope you guys understand. Yes, sir. Now, they are going ahead and telling, capital goods can also be imported in complete knockdown or semi-knockdown to be assembled in India. You got a big plant and machinery from outside India and you uh, completely broken it and you have got it, you can assemble it in India also. They are going ahead and telling, import of capital goods is subject to actual user condition. If I am being given the advance authorization, only I can go ahead and import capital goods shall be can be sold or transferred only after completion of the export obligation indigenous sourcing sir if i go ahead and take domestically the capital goods i have not spent forex yes or no everyone so they are telling your export obligation i will reduce it only to 75 percent uh, otherwise it is how much six time six time otherwise it is six time everyone yes or no can i go ahead everyone sir what was this 85 percent 85 percent was post export sir sorry first i imported i paid the duty first i imported i paid the duty this basic custom duty will be returned to me but what is my export obligation 85 percent sir if i first went ahead and imported first paid custom duty then i am going ahead and exporting making goods and exporting basic custom duty will be given back to me but my export obligation is only 85 percent of the duty saved Clear? But sir, if supposingly I went ahead and got the capital goods, did not pay the duty, then my export obligation is how much? Six times. Sir, if I go ahead and buy the goods in India, I did not pay the duty. I bought it from a person in India only. I save foreign currency, your export obligation is how much? Only 75%. Baba, when you take it from a person in India, that time whatever duty you have not paid, of that you have to pay how much? 75%. Now, sir, EOU, EOU, ESTP, Software Export uh, Oriented Unit, Electronic Hardware Technology Park, Software Technology Park, Biotechnology Park. Import capital goods, inputs without payment of duty. You know why? EOU, ESTP, Biotechnology Park, Software Technology Park, all these are make in India. They will make, 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 export, 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 get foreign currency. So, government is very happy with them. Government told if you are establishing yourself as a EOU, 
और ईएसटीपी और एसटीपी और बायोटेक्नोलॉजी पार्क वी विल गो एड एंड अलाउ यू टू इंपोर्ट एनीथिंग इंपोर्ट्स कैपिटल गुड्स विदाउट पेमेंट ऑफ एनी ड्यूटी यूनिट्स अंडरटेकिंग टू एक्सपोर्ट एंटायर प्रोडक्शन मे बी सेट अप अंडर व्हाट ईओयू और ईएसटीपी और सॉफ्टवेयर टेक्नोलॉजी पार्क और बायोटेक्नोलॉजी पार्क ओनली इफ यू आर प्रॉमिसिंग दैट आई विल गो एड एंड एक्सपोर्ट एवरीथिंग यू शुड सेट अप ओवर देयर इन ए इन ए सॉफ्टवेयर टेक्नोलॉजी पार्क और बायोटेक्नोलॉजी पार्क और ईओयू सर यूनिट्स अंडरटेकिंग टू एक्सपोर्ट एंटायर प्रोडक्शन मे बी सेट अप अंडर द ईओयू और ईएसटीपी और एसटीपी और बीटीपी स्कीम फॉर मैन्युफैक्चर ऑफ गुड्स इंक्लूडिंग रिपेयर्स रीमेक रीकंडीशनिंग री इंजीनियरिंग रेंडरिंग ऑफ सर्विस डेवलपमेंट ऑफ सॉफ्टवेयर एक्सेट्रा ऑल दीज एक्टिविटीज कैन बी डन बाय देम दे कैन मेक रिपेयर सर मेक सॉफ्टवेयर एक्सेट्रा एंड एक्सपोर्ट देन सर ट्रेडिंग यूनिट्स आर नॉट कवर्ड व्हाई वी आर प्रमोटिंग मेक इन इंडिया यू आर टेलिंग आई विल बाय आई विल एक्सपोर्ट यू आर नॉट अलाउड इन थिंग are we clear baba all these people are basically going to produce software biotechnology government is telling make in india i am promoting i am not promoting trading buying from outside india exporting outside india are we clear everyone those trading units will not be allowed eou estp stp btps can start production within how much time 2 years of grant of uh, lop is letter of permission or letter of intent letter of permission or letter of intent done everyone everyone over here only projects having minimum investment of how much 1 crore plant and machinery shall be considered for what eou EOU may if you want to set yourself up, up how much plant and machinery may investment one crore. This shall not apply to EOU. Oh sorry, L E S T P Electronic Hardware Technology Park, Software Technology Park, Bio Technology Park. EOUs in handicraft. Baba handicraft wala. You are telling one crore. You have to minimum invest. Sir, handicraft, agriculture, horticulture, aquaculture, animal husbandry, information technology, software, brass hardware, and handmade. jewelry sector for these people 1 crore ka limit not applicable they must have positive net foreign exchange earner they must have a for negative foreign exchange sorry positive exchange earning 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 okay everyone means how much you have spent how much you you have earned earning should be more than your spending which shall be cumulatively in a block of 5 years starting from production from production till date they will go ahead and see what you have earned in foreign currency and what you have spent in foreign currency have you made any benefit in foreign currency or not are we clear everyone they should have positive uh, positive uh, basically earning which is there foreign exchange earning sir entitlement for supply from dta to eou domestic tariff area say if you are supplying to eou it will be regarded as deemed export eou estp dta unit shall be entitled to deemed export ka benefit whoever is the domestic tariff area wala unit if they are supplying to eou estp software technology park it will be deemed as a export deemed export ka benefit will be given to them sir i r e refund e fund it has become refund refund of gst paid on such supply also will be given baba whatever is the gst it will be refunded deemed export may refund is given under gst so if i am going and supply to a person which is deemed export whatever gst i have paid i will be able to claim a refund application within 2 years rfd 01 can i go ahead everyone yes in addition eou estp stp btp shall not pay basic custom duty igst says on imported goods till 30th of june means if i am a software technology park etc i can go ahead and import and without payment of any duty igst and gst compensation says is also exempted itc will be available on input or capital goods if you have gone ahead and paid any uh, domestic area may if you have gone ahead and purchased and paid any gst on inputs and capital goods that will be available to you are we clear everyone next sir inter unit transfer of manufactured goods and capital goods sir can i go ahead and transfer from one eou estp stp to another yes it is allowed on payment of gst and compensation says with prior intimation to whom concerned development commissioner and custom authority sir can i exit from the eou scheme 
I want to exit. You can take the approval of the development commissioner and payment of applicable GST and says basically you, you say you will go ahead and take out all your goods inputs which you had imported without paying any duty. They are telling you have to pay all the duty and GST compensation says which is applicable. If you have not achieved your obligations, then you will have to pin you will be penalized also. Sir, sale of unutilized material including capital goods and spares and services they are going ahead and telling if you transfer to another eou estp stp btp it will be treated as import for the receiver i have you have gone ahead and sold it to me one eou has gone ahead and sold it to me it will be treated as what imports uh, or disposed of in the domestic tariff area then baba you have to pay gst and basic custom duty or you can go ahead and export it also everyone over here what chapter number seven over here what did we learn we went ahead and learned chapter number one legal framework and trade facilitation we learned general provision relating to import and export we went ahead and learned export from india scheme i went ahead and taught you rodtp i taught chapter number four which is there then i went ahead and told you chapter number five chapter number six and now chapter number seven which is deemed export over here can you see over here deemed export Transaction in which goods don't leave India and payment is received in INR or foreign currency and it will be deemed as a export. Sir, deemed export ka benefit will be given to the supplier basically. Sir, if you are supplying under an advance authorization, sir, one person had advance authorization. I went ahead and supplied to this person and he gave me the advance authorization. What is my supply? Deemed export. In GST, we went ahead and learned. A A E E boys P G sir advance authorization ka person ko if you are supplying E O U ko if you are supplying sir E P C G holder ko if you are supplying sir if you are supplying bank or P S U supplying gold then also it is deemed export but here it is different here deemed export ka definition is different supplies under advance authorization or D F I if someone has an advance authorization or D F I and you are supplying to him it's your deemed export supply to eou estp stp btp is also deemed export supplies against export promotion capital goods authorization this was advanced authorization this is export promotion capital goods authorization supply of maritime freight container by 100 percent eou baba there is a 100 percent export oriented unit and they make these containers for what is container baba in the ship containers will go no these containers they are going ahead and making and if these containers are being supplied by the these people by whom eou then it will be termed as what deemed export. deemed export because it will go outside india come back go outside india come back so whenever they are going ahead and supplying maritime freight container maritime freight container means containers which will be used in the ship also it will be known as deemed export supplies to mega power project nuclear project united nation or international international organization for official use then also it will be deemed export they can go ahead and ask you what are the items which are classified as deemed export under ftp everyone over here now now listen to me very carefully please come back to the general provisions which were left out provisions relating to import of goods everyone there are some general provisions which are given which respect to provision relating to import and provision relating to export everyone over here actual user condition always remember one thing goods which are imported freely may be imported by any person however if such goods are required an authorization might be restriction is there and authorization is given then authorization is subject to actual user condition means the person who has been given an authorization to import only can import unless dgft deletes that okay actual user condition i am dispensing it off otherwise always actual condition actual user condition is there so they are telling however if imports require an authorization means restricted import such actual user condition alone actual user alone may import such goods unless actual user condition is specifically dispensed by the dgft always remember one thing if you have got an authorization if you have got a authorization or might be you have gone ahead and taken any permission always remember it is always subject to actual user condition he will give you means you only should use it unless he specifically dispenses it off that okay you can go ahead and transfer it also otherwise it is always actual user condition if any permission any authorization is given to you always it is actual user condition next sir import baba dfi is not actual user condition dfi import of second hand goods sir can i get second hand goods from outside india these are telling general provision relating to import. 
Secondly, sir, second hand goods including capital, uh, second hand capital goods including refurbished, reconditioned spare freely allowed. No problem. Sir, second hand PCs, laptop, photocopier, AC, DG set allowed only against authorization. Second hand goods except capital goods shall be restricted only allowed against authorization. So, you should know that, sir, if I want to get second hand goods, what to do here? Next, sir, scrap, SEZ may some scrap was there. If you go ahead and clear in the domestic tariff area, then see here. Any waste or scrap or remnant, including any form of metallic waste or scrap generated during manufacturing processing activity of an SEZ shall be allowed to be dispensed in the domestic tariff area freely subject to custom duty payment. Because SEZ when it got from outside India, it did not pay any duty. When you are clearing in the domestic tariff area, you are pay, required to pay custom duty. Import of gift. You know what? People were going ahead and getting goods from outside India saying, sir, gift. Gift has come from my sister in US, brother in US. Import of goods, including those purchased from e-com portal through post or courier where custom clearance is sought as gift. See, Baba, otherwise, courier pay 100% duty is there. But if you are telling gift, Gift, nothing allowed as gift. They are telling is prohibited, not allowed only other than life-saving drug or medicine. Medicines can be gifted and can be allowed. And Rakhi. Rakhi? Brother, sister. Baba, but they are going ahead and telling, don't go ahead and talk about gift for Rakhi. Your brother send you, your sister send you Rakhi, that is okay. Gift for Rakhi not allowed that. Baba, you have to clear only on payment of duty. You can't clear it as gift. Are we clear everyone? Next. Otherwise, whole year people will play. Okay, sir. Brother, sister. Brother, sister. Gift has come. Rakhi gift has come. Government is telling no, Baba. No, we will not go ahead and allow any gift. Can I go ahead? Otherwise, people will accumulate whole year. On the day of Rakhi, they will send all the gift. <laughs> they are telling no. Sir, import of sample. No authorization is required for import of bona fide technical and trade sample. Importable freely. Samples up to 3 lakh. Can, Baba, these are general provisions. When you are importing or exporting, general provision. Sir, 3 lakh can be imported by all exported without any duty. Authorization for import of sample is required in case of vegetable, seeds, bees and new drugs. Tea sample up to 2000 CIF per consignment allowed without any authorization. CIF value how much? 2000 can be imported without any authorization. They can ask you one small provision saying, sir, write a note on import of samples under uh, under uh, FTP. Next, sir, passenger baggage. Are, sir, passenger baggage. You remember what we learned in custom was followed from here only. This was the bus. That was the custom rules which was made. Everyone here, bona fide household goods, personal effect may be imported. And that is why under customs rules, we are allowed. Terms and condition of baggage rule 1998 is applicable. Samples of freely importable item, whatever is the freely importable item, the samples we have learned now, may be imported in baggage without any authorization. Exporters coming from abroad allow drawings, patterns. Who are exporters? Sir, we are going to export. So, might be you would have gone abroad. So, when you are coming from abroad, you can get drawings, labels, price tag, button, belt, trimmer without any authorization. Then, re-import of goods repaired abroad. Sir, I send the goods to repair. Going. Sir, re-importation is fresh import. You exported the goods for repair. It will come back. Re-importation is what? Fresh importation. Sir, capital goods, equipment, component, part and accessories sent abroad for repair, re-import without any... Here they are telling you don't need any authorization. In section number 20 of the Custom Act, they told, Sir, going and coming up here, plus fair cost of repair, plus material pay, duty has to be paid. That is Custom Act. Here they are telling, DGFT, don't come to me. Not required. Authorization not required. You send, get it repaired, get it. Otherwise, everyone, Sir, I am sending one machine for repair. Give me authorization. DGFT is telling, I hey, get lost. Not required. Authorization only is not required. Next. Then they are telling over here, Import of goods, including capital goods, used in project abroad. I have gone ahead and taken some goods from India, outside India, for a project outside India. Can happen or not? I took some capital goods from India to do a project outside India. Might be I am undertaking one metro project outside India. They are telling re-import after completion of the project without any authorization provided you have used at least how much year? One year outside India. 
Import under lease financing. Can I go ahead and import under lease financing? Freely permittable. No permission is required. However, some cases RBI approval is required. Sir, clearance of goods per custom may also be cleared against advance authorization issued subsequently. Facility not applicable to restricted or state trading enterprises ka item. Everyone over here now. Free export. Sir, can I go ahead and export free, free, free? See here. All goods may be exported without any restriction except to the extent that such export is regulated by ITCHS. Baba, you have to see. I, one minute, I will show you. Here, see here everyone. Import, export. In export policy, here I taught you import policy. Can you see export policy? In here, restricted will be there, prohibited will be there. If it is restricted or prohibited, otherwise it is always free. Any other provision, it says all goods may be exported without any restriction except to the extent that such exported goods is regulated by ITCHS. Means if it is told in the ITCHS that sir, it can be exported only by state trading enterprise. It is restricted or prohibited. Prohibited means you can't send. Restricted means you need an authorization. Then it says or any other provision of FTP or any other law. If it is prohibited by uh, so you have to go ahead and see the ITCHS. You have to see any other law or you have to see any other provision of FTP. If it is not prohibited, not restricted, then freely exportable. Then it says DGFT may however specify through a public notice such terms and conditions according to which any goods not included in the ITCHS may be exported without authorization. DGFT has that power. Sir, export of gifts. They are telling goods including edible item of value less than or equal to 5 lakh in a license year may be exported as gift. However, restricted item shall not be exported without authorization. Third party export. What do you mean by third party export? Do you remember merchant exporters? They will buy from third parties, put it in a container and export. Do you remember merchant exporters who will buy from all the people who are manufacturers and they will put it in a container and export outside India. Those people are known as what? Known as what? Merchant exporter. Now they are telling third party export means export made by an exporter or manufacturer on behalf of other exporter. Might be two, three exporters are there. I am going in and exporting. I took their goods. I put it in a container and I exported them. Export document shall indicate the name of both manufacturer exporter and or manufacturer and third party exporter. I am also exporting. My name also should be there. Other people whose goods also I am putting in the container and exporting, their name also should be there. It's in the shipping bill. Bank realization certificate, export order, invoice should be in the name of the third party exporter. Are we clear everyone? You are going ahead and telling these are the third party. Their name pay bank realization certificate etc. should be obtained. Can I go ahead everyone? Export promotion cap council. Everyone listen here. Export promotion council. Sir, export promotion council. I will go to... Uh, Ministry of Commerce. Everyone here. In Ministry of Commerce, if you go ahead and see, here, government have formed export promotion councils. Where are the export promotion councils? Not to be seen only. Wait, from where it will be hiding. Here, 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 here. Export promotion council. These are export promotion council, sector specific they have gone ahead and created export promotion council who will go to other countries and see what is the need of that product, in which country the requirement is there and they will try to promote that product. Are we clear everyone? These are the export promotion council. Can you see council of leather? They will make sure that all the leather items which are there are being exported where the need of that leather is there. Like that we have pharmaceutical export promotion council. We have Indian oil seeds and produce. Like this lot of export promotion. Cashew export promotion council is there. So like this. They are going ahead and telling over here. Export promotion council. These are organizations set up with the objective to promote and export. Promote and develop Indian export. Export promotion council is responsible for promotion of a particular product, project, or service if exporter intends to obtain export incentive if you want export incentive it has to mandatorily register himself with the export promotion council procedure is you have to give an application in enf 2 c then export promotion council will go ahead and issue you a registration come membership certificate registering him rmc rcmc means 
रजिस्ट्रेशन का मेंबरशिप सर्टिफिकेट शैल बी वैलिड फॉर हाउ मच फ्रॉम फर्स्ट अप्रिल ऑफ द ईयर इन विच इट वॉज इश्यूड एंड रिमेन वैलिड फॉर हाउ मेनी ईयर्स फाइव ईयर दे कैन गो एड एंड आस्क यू नोट ऑन export promotion council remember sir what do you mean by registration cum membership certificate it is issued by the export promotion council it's a certificate evidencing registration of an exporter as a member of export promotion council like apparel ka export promotion council is there cashew export promotion council is there then any person applying so if i am a cashew manufacturer and i want export incentives i have to register myself with the export promotion council any person applying for authorization to import or export if you want an authorization or any other benefit concession under the ftp shall be required to furnish to the ggft website in import export profile rcmc certificate granted by the competent authority basically you have to go to the, all these people and take your rcmc certificate if you want to go ahead and take authorization incentives etc then sir example certificate of registration as export of spices issued by the spices board shall be treated as RCMC, sir. Export credit agencies. Now, for going ahead and exporting, there are credit agencies who are there who will go ahead and give you credit. They are telling our policy instrument from government to support export. Export credit agencies support exports by insuring by insurance guarantee and also direct. lending they will give you money as direct lending also export credit guarantee corporation of india provides credit insurance support and also export credit lending are we clear everyone so now listen to me very carefully can you come down the last chart everyone it says foreign trade policy baba this chapter which is there is a self explanatory chapter the only thing students don't read it is because it is lengthy so in the fourth chart i have summarized it you read that much solve your question answers i think that much only it is worth the time you should not be spending much time on it right everyone so that much only you should spend time on it principles of restrictions and prohibition for import and export revised in line with international agreement you know what happened for importing and exporting an item what are the principles they have revised it sir we will not go ahead and allow those items to be exported which are shortage in india so what are the principles are we clear for they are telling principles of restrictions and prohibition for import or export revised in line with line with international organize international agreement with effect from 10th of august principles of restrictions and prohibition for import or export have been revised DGFT may through a notification impose prohibition and restriction. Now they went ahead and told, from India food grains can't be exported, prohibited. Why? Because shortage was there. So, Baba, when they can go ahead on export of food stuff or other essential product, they can go ahead and impose prohibition when, when sir, for preventing critical shortage. Otherwise, internationally you are not allowed to stop any exports. As per international agreements, you are not allowed to stop any exports, but if there is critical shortage in my country should i save myself or should i go ahead and save outside india then sir on export of necessary on export uh, import and export necessary for the application of standard regulation for classification grading or marketing of commodity in the international trade then they are going ahead and telling on import of fishery product they can go ahead and impose restriction import in any form for enforcement of governmental measure to restrict production of the domestic product or for certain other purpose on import of on import to a safeguard country external finance position means government is telling we want to safeguard our country ka financial position we don't want to export because it will become unfavorable balance and to ensure level of reserve sir we want to maintain le level of reserves so we don't want to import we are creating a restriction then sir on import to promote establishment of a particular industry they can go ahead and say in india we want this industry to flourish if we go ahead and not impose restriction on import of this item this industry can never flourish because this this industry is now growing in india from outside india if goods will come those people are more competitive already so india may this industry can't flourish so we can impose restriction they are telling for prevention of sudden increase in the import for causing serious injury to the domestic producer if some imports are happening in huge quantity i told you safeguard duty can be imposed 
the same way restriction also can be imposed what is safeguard measure sir safeguard duty tariff rate quota and also they can impose restriction are you guys able to understand everyone now for protection of public moral might be for public moral they don't want any item to be imported for exported for protection of human animal plant life etc they can go ahead and impose a restriction then sir might be one plant is there one animal is there outside india flu is there they are telling you can't get chickens into india only they can go ahead and impose a restriction they are going ahead and telling sir relating to importation and exportation of gold and silver they can go ahead and create restriction sir then necessary to secure compliance with the law and regulation including those relating to protection of patent trademark copyright etc if they want they can go ahead and create a restriction so these are basically the general thoughts which are there general principles which are to be implemented by the government sir see at the time of for protection of countries essential security interest at the time of war all this time may they can go ahead and create all this restrictions etc baba this is just for your reading ones please read and go at least three to four points you remember why sir because they can go ahead and ask you i think it is general explanatory everyone in line with international agreement they are telling we can go ahead and impose what principles of restriction and prohibition now why they will go ahead and impose you remember sir india may critical shortage is there why will not they not go ahead and impose restriction are we clear everyone they are telling india with this domestic industry i want to go ahead and flourish so they will tell this item should not be got into india might be there is a serious injury which is happening to domestic industry they can go ahead and restrict so these are the principles for importation and exportation pay when restriction can be implemented are we clear everyone here i will go ahead and close my discussion on foreign trade policy listen everyone now all you go ahead and read is your textbook solve question answers and you are done baba more than this foreign trade policy i think you should not be spending time you should solve question answers but do right everyone i'll go ahead and solve okay one minute everyone listen in this chapter also what is the most important points you should remember always sir iec code everyone mark this import export code is very important for your exam you should remember sir what are the guiding principles which are there you should remember the guiding principles what are the measures taken to support the guiding principles export promotion council rcmc certificates then imports of samples you should remember sir status holder is something which is important RODTP scheme I have explained, EPCG scheme I have explained you, advance authorization DFI I have explained it to you. Uh, deemed export you should remember what are the various types of deemed export. Then sir, this EOU ESTP you know they go ahead and ask sometimes a small question, and this restrictions anyways I have gone ahead and told you three to four you can go ahead and remember right everyone. I'll go ahead and close my discussion on foreign trade policy, but don't forget you have to practice. question answers right everyone we'll close our discussion on foreign trade policy over here everyone congratulations